NIST introduced SP-800-171 in 2015. It is the standard for protecting controlled unclassified information, or CUI, in non-federal systems. There have been two major revisions, Revision 1 in 2017 and 2 in 2020. NIST scheduled the final publication for Revision 3 in early 2024. Hi everyone, I'm Matt from eTactics, and today I'm going to explain the NIST SP-800-171. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to your YouTube channel by clicking the button below. While you're down there, hit that alert bell icon next to it as well, so when we post new helpful content, you get notified. NIST SP-800-171 Rev-2 contains 110 security requirements. NIST derived these requirements from two source publications, the Federal Information Processing Standards Publication 200, or FIPS 200, and the Moderate Security Baseline from Special Publication 853 Rev-4. Let's break down NIST SP-800-171's basic requirements, derived security requirements, assumptions, security requirement families, applicability, assessment, assessment procedures, assurance cases, and determination procedures. First, basic requirements. NIST incorporated the basic requirements from the FIPS 200 or FIPS 200 out of the 17 security requirements in the same. NIST included 14 in SP-800-171. These requirements cover 17 security related areas, access control, awareness and training, audit and accountability, certification, accreditation, and security assessments, and configuration management, contingency planning, identification and authentication, incident response, maintenance, media protection, physical and environmental protection, planning, personnel security, risk assessment, systems and service acquisitions, system and communication protections, and system and information integrity. NIST actually tailored out the following areas in the SP-800-171. Contingency planning, planning, and systems and services acquisition. NIST included these specifications as basic security requirements within NIST SP-800-171. For example, here are the first four requirements from FIPS-200. Second, derived security requirements. NIST derived the other requirements by tailoring the SP-853B moderate security baseline. This tailoring focused on protecting CUI from unauthorized disclosure in non-federal systems. Appendix E of the SP-800-171 specifies these tailoring actions. Removing controls not related to protecting the confidentiality of CUI, removing controls that were the responsibility of the federal government, and removing controls NIST assumed non-federal organizations would implement without specification. Third, assumptions. NIST addressed a few of their assumptions in this publication. Protection requirements for CUI are consistent regardless of where it resides. Safeguards implemented to protect CUI are consistent regardless of where the information resides. The confidentiality Im impact value for CUI is no less than FIPS 199 moderate. The non-federal organizations already have systems and do not buy systems to handle CUI. Non-federal organizations have safeguarding measures in place to protect their own information. Non-federal organizations may use effective compensating controls. Many solutions exist to help non-federal organizations meet these security requirements. Fourth, security requirement families. NIST organized security requirements into 14 families. Except for three, these aligned with the requirements described in FIPS 200. Fifth, applicability. The requirements apply to components to non-federal systems that process, store, or transmit CUI. They also extend to components that provide security protection for such components. Organizations may limit the scope of applicability by isolating these components. Physical and logical architecture and design concepts may achieve isolation. Sixth, assessment. NIST SP-800-171A contains the assessment procedures for SP-800-171. The non-federal organizations describe how they meet the requirements in the system security plan. The defined system boundary guides the scope of the assessment. The prescribed procedures assess the implementation and effectiveness of the security requirements. Seventh, assessment procedures. An assessment procedure consists of an objective and a set of methods and objects. Each assessment objective includes one or more determination statements linked to the requirement. The application of an assessment procedure produces assessment findings. Much like I mentioned earlier, assessment methods include examine, interview, and test. The examine method involves analyzing assessment objectives, such as specifications, mechanisms, activities. The interview method involves holding discussions with individuals or groups of individuals. Testing involves exercising assessment objectives, like activities or mechanisms, under specified conditions. Organizations are not expected to use all assessment methods or objects. Organizations choose those that are the most useful in obtaining the desired results. Appendix D describes the attributes of depth and coverage for each assessment method. 
Eighth, assurance cases. An assurance case is a body of evidence organized into an argument that demonstrates a claim. An internal or external designated official may gather evidence during the assessment. They process and make determinations about compliance to the security requirements. They conduct system level assessments to determine the effectiveness and compliance of the requirements. Ninth, the procedures. Assessors achieve assessment objectives by applying a method to the selected objectives. This produces evidence necessary to make the associated determination. Each determination statement produces one of the following findings. Satisfied, meaning the evidence collected indicates the objective produces an acceptable result, other than satisfied, meaning that potential anomalies exist or that there was not enough information. In a landscape of ever-changing technology and increasingly sophisticated threats, your commitment to implementing and upholding the controls laid out within the NIST SP-800-171 becomes absolutely critical. It's important to keep in mind that cybersecurity isn't a fixed destination, but rather an ongoing and dynamic journey. If you'd like to learn more about NIST SP-800-171, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below.